Hey, on today's edition of Will She Eat It, my nine-year-old daughter, Leah, is going to eat my oysters Rockefeller off the smoker for the first time. And if she likes them, if she takes a second one, then I'm a winner. But if she doesn't, what happens, Leah? You get the ice bucket. Then I get the ice bucket, which I do not want, so I hope you guys are rooting for me. Let's head into the kitchen, and I'll show you how I make these. Hey, welcome to the kitchen. This is where we're gonna get started. So the recipe for Oysters Rockefeller was developed in 1899 at Antoine's restaurant in New Orleans. That was a long time ago. Now, interestingly, there is no such thing as making the authentic Oysters Rockefeller recipe because they've never given it away. What? So we're gonna make my interpretation of it. Lots of chefs have their own and uh, let's get started. So I'm gonna start by getting some heat in my pan, and of course, we're gonna work with our favorite carnivore ingredient, bacon. So this is actually bacon that I made myself and smoked here at home. If you'd like to know how to do that, I've actually got a video about that. I'll put a link to it in the description for you. But we're gonna start by getting this chopped up bacon nice and crispy. Okay. We've got some, uh, some good texture on these. They've cooked down. I'm gonna pull them out and put them in a bowl. Now, usually when you cook bacon, especially when you fry it, when you're done, you put it on a paper towel to drain the fat, but the fat is a big part of the flavor profile of what we're cooking here. So we're gonna embrace the fat with this bacon. So our next step is gonna be to deglaze this pan with uh, some white wine. So we're gonna put a little bit of white wine in. Wish you guys could smell this. Like, we really need to get YouTube to put smell -o vision together. Okay, now I've got this simmering, and I'm going to uh, dump in one stick of butter that I've uh, cut into packs, one shallot that I uh, chopped up pretty loosely, three crushed garlic cloves. Okay, we're gonna reduce this butter and we're gonna saute these shallots and garlic for about a minute, just till they start to turn a little bit translucent. So while those simmer, we're gonna to put together the first of our two toppings. Now, one of the key ingredients of the first topping is uh, panko breadcrumbs, but of course I'm a keto guy, so I make these just by grinding up uh, uh, pork rinds. So uh, it's a good start, and then I'm gonna mix in about a cup of Parmesan cheese, and then some uh, fine chopped parsley. And I'm gonna just mix this up. Looks like I've got good translucence. So I'm gonna spoon about half of this mixture into my panko Parmesan. So I've got butter and bacon fat and shallots and garlic that are going into here. And then I'm just gonna mix this up into uh, kind of a wet crumble. Okay, let's get back to our, uh, our other sauce. So we've got a nice simmer going with the remainder of the bacon fat, butter, shallots, and garlic. I'm gonna add a quarter cup of heavy cream. I'm gonna increase my heat to bring it back to a simmer. Now that we're back to a simmer, I'm gonna dump in a uh, chopped bag, about a 10 ounce bag of fresh spinach. Say that again. Fresh spinach. Fresh spinach. Okay, with the spinach almost all the way cooked down, we're gonna add a little bit more. We're gonna add a little bit more wine. And we add that, you know, because we like wine. And uh, of course, I know you guys are afraid because you saw me use a vegetable and I've got spinach in here, but don't worry because we're gonna counteract all of the spinach craziness by putting the bacon back in there. So it's spinach cooked in bacon fat with bacon bits. I think we're gonna be okay. And then I've also got about six ounces of uh, freshly shredded Gruyere. I'm gonna bring my heat down and I'm just gonna fold this in until the Gruyere has melted. Okay, let's cut our heat off and let's set this separate topping, the spinach bacon topping, or maybe we should say the bacon spinach topping. Uh, and we're gonna set this in a bowl and we're gonna let this cool. 
Okay, while our topping's cool, it's time to shuck some oysters. Now, these are Blue Point oysters from New York. If we were doing authentic oysters Rockefeller, we'd be using Gulf oysters, uh, of course, from Louisiana, but I don't live near the Gulf, and so uh, Blue Points are nice big oysters, and that's what you want. So what I'm doing here to get prepared, I'm putting on a cut-resistant glove, and then over that, I'm gonna put a nitrile glove, and then I'm gonna use a towel here that is an oyster shucking towel. And this is an abundance of caution. And if you're wondering why there's an abundance of caution, it's uh, because I've learned the hard way. If you ever jab yourself and stab yourself in the hand uh, while shucking oysters and get that uh, oyster juice in there and get it infected, by the way, it's not fun. <laughs> so use, uh, use protection. Uh, safe shucking, everybody. All right, so let me show you how we shuck an oyster. So let me pull one of these blue points here. So if you look at the oyster, you can see there's a joint right here, and that's how it opens. And we're actually gonna open it from the joint. A lot of people think you do it from here, but that's just gonna crack the shell. So all I'm gonna do is hold the oyster in the oyster towel, and I'm gonna put the knife right into the edge, and I'm gonna rock back and forth. Now this is an oyster knife. By the way, I'll put links to the glove and the towel and the oyster knife, everything in the description so you can get it. But then we just rock back and forth and then the top is gonna come right off. Now notice inside we've got all that lovely liquor and we wanna try to keep as much of that as we can. So I'm gonna loosen the muscle. I'm just gonna use my oyster knife here to get underneath it. And then I'm gonna place it in this oyster roasting tray where it will hopefully stay somewhere close to level. Now, why am I using an oyster roasting tray? Because it's really hard to get these level and to keep that liquor in there. And that liquor, by the way, is delicious. It's really gonna have an impact on the flavor of your smoked oysters, whether you're grilling them uh, or roasting them like this. So I'll go ahead and uh, shut the rest of these real quick. All right, that was fun. So uh, I have a confession to make. Shucking oysters is hard. So I had a couple of spares in case there were some that I couldn't do out of the original dozen, but I didn't need them because I'm a rock star. High five myself. Okay, let's go ahead and get our toppings on the oysters. So I'm gonna start with my spinach and bacon and Gruyere mixture. And I'm just gonna spoon some right on top of each one. Nice heaping pile. And then I'm gonna take some of my uh, breadcrumb parmesan and parsley mixture, and I'm just gonna drizzle it on top of each of these. Okay, I think these are ready. I think this is a preparation that the nine-year-old is gonna eat and enjoy and take a second bite of. Of course, I'm not sure, but with bacon and all this good stuff in there, I'm hoping that I did it right. Uh, the smoker is fired up, so let's head outside. I'll meet you at the grill. Hey, welcome to the backyard. If you've been here before, you recognize Darth and Yoda over my shoulders, our smokers. Uh, Darth, we're gonna be working with today. He's our extra large big green egg. He's running at 250 degrees, burning Fogo premium hardwood charcoal and chunks of cherry because I think the flavor of that cherry is just gonna go really well with the richness of the oysters Rockefeller, who, by the way, if you didn't know, these were named after, uh, of course, the Rockefeller family, the richest family uh, at the time when these were invented in 1899 because the recipe is so rich. So we'll see uh, whether it's too rich or just rich enough for a nine-year-old in just a minute. If you're new here, by the way, you probably figured out this isn't a vegan cooking channel. Uh, I cook vegans. Most of the time on the show, you're gonna see me making grass or grain-fed beef or pork that was raised on corn or even acorns with Iberico pork, uh, chicken, lamb, goat, that kind of thing. I like to cook and eat them and show you how. So if that's your jam, I hope you'll consider joining the family. Subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, on Instagram. There's even a TikTok channel that's blowing up right now. So hopefully, uh, however you want to engage, you'll join us. So let's go ahead and get these on dark. Okay, these are only gonna take a few minutes to smoke, so for me, I'll be back in 15 or 20 minutes. For you, it'll be just a couple of seconds. 
Hey guys, while those oysters are cooking, uh, I've got to have a quick, serious conversation with you. So there have been some vegans that have been kind of upset that I've been making fun of vegetables on the YouTube channel and TikTok and everywhere, and uh, they're getting offended. So I went and did some research to try to learn more about how vegans think, and I came across the saddest book. This is maybe the saddest book ever published. This is Vegan Cooking for One. And that means there are lots of vegans, hundreds of thousands of copies of this sold, sitting around all alone, having to cook just for themselves, probably crying. So we need to be supportive of those vegans. I need your help. Please find a vegan, hug a vegan, a vegan person, of course. If it's a vegan cow, then, you know, cut it up and grill it and eat it. You guys hear that plane? There's like an audience that wants to see me get water dumped on me, but I think you're gonna like them. I think I'm gonna be safe. Am I gonna be safe? I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes. Time to go get those oysters off of the grill. We'll be right back. Okay, I'm a little nervous, but I'm confident because I did a good job. I know I did a good job. We'll just see if I did a good job for a nine-year-old. Are you ready to tell Leah? All right, so Oysters Rockefeller from New Orleans. These were invented in 1899. I made everything from scratch. There's my homemade bacon on there. You love my homemade bacon, right? There's spinach, you like spinach, right? A nine-year-old who likes spinach. I think we got no choice. All right, so we got three cocktail forks. Fingers, use the cocktail stick. There's uh, one for me, one for Leah, and one for you guys. Uh, so I'll just uh, scoop this one out. And this, one, this one's gonna be for you, so just reach over and grab that. All right, Leah, are you ready for one? Which one are you gonna taste? All right, you take that big one. I'm gonna take this one here. Let's both take a taste. All right, here we go. Cheers, cheers. All right, it's good. Okay, she's making me nervous. What, what, uh, are you gonna take another one? Yes. Yes? I win two in a row, I'm undefeated! Thank you for letting me win two in a row. I'm glad that you like these. All right, well, I'm gonna dump them right away. Wait, wait, what do you mean? Wait, what? <laughs> All right, the things that a father puts up with for the daughter he loves. Did you guys know this was gonna happen? I love you. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> 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 that is cold. I hope you guys are watching a lot, because... <laughs> That wasn't so much fun. Okay, remember everybody, practice safe shucking when you make this recipe. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, check out this one over here. I made Acme Oyster House's grilled oysters, and if you've already seen that one, check this one out. And we see you next time on Eat More Vegans. Eat more vegans.